Okay, so hi guys. I decided to show you the blinds have finally come in. Um, there is a story to why these are down during the day. Well, first of all, the sun is going to start shifting. Um, it is going to start being a lot lighter in here. Um, unfortunately, these really don't cancel out a lot of sunlight. Um, this old TV is very, very, very hard to see once the sun hits in here, no matter what I do. But um, I'm in love with these. I love the click. So you just, you know, it's not rocket science. Raise, lower. But right now I just want them lower. So um, I'm in love with these. There's also a reason, um, aside from the time of day, why I'm keeping them down. And then I'm just going to show you in my room um, what they look like. So the only um, thing I, I don't like, and I should have thought of this before, is when I had the paper blinds up. Obviously, I had one paper blind here and one paper blind here. So I sort of should have done that with this. Because once this opens, you know, now this is all exposed because I need to get air in here. Um, but you know, it is what it is. So I'm just happy they're up. They're working properly. Um, been a long time in coming over two months. So, and then I did, um, this room as well. I kind of wonder why I did this room. Um, I don't know. I just, I, I couldn't live with the blinds in here. And eventually this is going to be where, um, Mika, Charlie, Micha, and Frisky live I'm going to transition them in from this room because I really want to keep this room nice and intact and clean and they're clean I mean they're fine I mean there's me just sitting right there it's not doing a damn thing but um I really want to put in some nice drapes and um just really really keep it a guest room there is a tv you know connection which I haven't hooked up there's a fan um on that rare, rare, rare opportunity that somebody ever spends a night, I want this room ready. I don't want to sit there and have to, you know, recreate the wheel and moving cats and moving litter pans and all that stuff. So eventually they're going to transition. Um, they just don't know it into this room. Hard life. It's not going to be, trust me. But, um, I don't know where to point the camera. <laughs> um, I guess I'll just point it at this one here. So yesterday, before I had the blinds put in, of course, I had to move. That is an ottoman right there. It's the old leather ottoman, obviously leather chair. I moved the chair and I moved the ottoman, <coughs> excuse me, to right here. Well, this one was doing exactly what she was doing, sitting here, relaxing. Um, the paper blinds were still up because I didn't want to take them down till I was absolutely positively sure these people were going to show up and that they were going to be correctly measured. And then I'd have no recourse if I took them down and they canceled the appointment. I mean, I'm not going to have everybody know my business. Hi, baby. You tired, baby? I'm getting to your story. So I took the ottoman away. She saw the male person. She ran from here around the ottoman, which was here, remember? And she ran herself. She jumped thinking the ottoman was there. I don't know what she's thinking because her eyesight is perfectly fine. And I'll get to that in a minute. And she hit, I don't know what she hit because it happened so fast. I think she hit the wood. I don't think she hit the glass, but she hit and she hit her mouth. So if anybody that knows me and if Kamali is involved, I'm ready to have a nervous breakdown. Immediately I grabbed her. I put her on the couch. I tried to reassure her. She had blood in her mouth, very, very, I mean, just minute on her tooth, on her bottom tooth. 
There was no other visible signs of injury. The blood dried up immediately. I thought it was going to keep pouring out. It was just no more than dabbing it with a Q-tip and making sure no teeth were loose. I worried about her ears, her eyes, her nose, her legs, her back. I mean, I worried about everything. But she seemed to be fine. Um, back, just herself. Just absolutely herself. Um, I watched her very closely last night. Now she's, look at this over here. Mama. Mama. It's like if I'm where, I know, you're, you're tired. I'm getting to why you're tired. Um, and she was fine. Absolutely fine. Um, and continues to be fine. But this morning, I don't know if, I like to say, I pulled the rip cord. Um, I looked at her eye, her right eye, and it looked funny. It looked cloudy. But because it was darker in here and because I don't see very good, even with eyeballs and reading glasses and all that good stuff, um, I had thought possibly she injured her eye. That's it. That did it for me. I don't screw with eyes, ears. I don't screw with anything with her. I don't screw with anybody with anything. Like, I always joke, and I don't mean this jokingly, I sort of mean it seriously. If they had a puppy ambulance, I would probably be like, come help me. Is she okay? Are they okay? I mean, that's how crazy I get when it comes to them. When it comes to her, I'm off the charts. Like, off the charts. So, called the vet this morning. They got her in. They, um... First glance, the doctor's like, no, she looks good. Um, her teeth are fine. Nothing's loose. There's no indication of any injury. You know, how is she acting? I go, absolutely fine. Um, eating, drinking, pooping, jumping, craziness in the car, jumping on the couch, jumping, jumping, jumping. She's fine. But um, as a precaution, they stained her eye, eyes, um, if you've been to an eye doctor, if you've ever had a scratch on your cornea, I've had many. Oh my God, it's the worst feeling in the world. But they stain your eye with this yellow dye and then they wash it away with saline. So if there's any scratch, the yellow picks it up. Essentially, it's like a neon, like a neon nail polish color. Um, so there was nothing that showed up. So I was very, very, very grateful um, for that. And, um, yeah, I was like, are you kidding me? Are you absolutely positively kidding me? You had to go jump on something that wasn't there onto a piece of wood or a piece of glass. I mean, I heard the impact. I heard it. That's how, how bad it was and how loud it was that I was like, I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So, um, but something sort of odd has been going on and continues to be going on. Um, I met a neighbor two weeks ago, give or take, could be less by now. And we just talked in the front yard. I was on my side of the fence and he was on the sidewalk and you know, he had mentioned he had a wife with rheumatoid arthritis, and I felt bad for him. I thought, you know, he looks older. Come to find out he's only 65, but he looks older. So I'm picturing this, you know, feeble 70, 80-year-old. I thought, I thought he was like in his late 70s or something. Um, so me being me, stupid, opens her mouth and says, well, if you ever need any help with her. And I meant emergency wise. I didn't mean I'm going to be your new best friend caregiver. But that's how he sort of took it. And I didn't realize how it came out or how he interpreted it. So that was, I don't even know when. Um, maybe it was on a Thursday or something. And then by Sunday, we're all just sitting here, you know, it was a little warm, but I had the windows open and 
I put the sprinklers on and I hear a knock at my door and I'm like, oh my God, it was him. And, you know, I was like, hi. And well, he's like, I'm here, you know, I got to thinking about your offer and we'd like to take you up on it. And immediately I knew what he was telling me. And I was like, shit, how do I get out of this? How do I get out of this? And I kind of fumbled my words and kind of stretched the truth, made up a few stories, if you will, to try to back out of, you know, what I offered when I really didn't offer that. But um, he's like, well, why don't you come over and meet my wife? And I'm like, oh, my God. So literally, I had to close the house up, shut the sprinklers off. I could have said no. I don't know why I didn't say no. I didn't know why I didn't say, well, I'm in the middle of something or I can't do it right now or maybe at another time. But, you know, whatever. So I went over there and he's white. His wife is Asian. Not that that makes any difference. I'm just trying to give you a picture. Um, she is clearly younger than him. So she may be, I don't know, in her late 50s. It looks, I don't know. But she is, all screwed up with rheumatoid arthritis. And as I'm telling you this, forgive me if I'm repeating myself, but I'm going in a, in a, in a different direction. Um, there's more to the story. Because I think I had told you guys, but I'm not sure. So, you know, immediately he starts with, well, this is how I put her to bed. And I don't mean this disrespectfully. I don't mean it how it's going to sound and come out, but the house is creepy. It's very dark. It's very, I, I don't want to just say, I like, I don't want to say smelly, but it smells like, it smells like it's damp in there. Like it's a damp smell, um, or like moldy smell. And he, it's so, so small. It's smaller than my house. I mean, I have a nice, nice size living room. Their living room is half of my living room. It's tiny. And he has like this hospital bed that's not a hospital bed. It almost looks like a cot. And that's where she sleeps. And I mean, this woman can barely move around. And I guess because, and I'm just assuming, please, I don't know anything about the religion, but she doesn't want any medication, any Western medication. So I'm like, this woman is suffering. All her joints are inflamed. Visibly, she's by no means, you know, he's not lying. She's not lying. But... I took care of my mom for 15 years. I'm not taking care of your wife. And I know that's going to come off sounding like a bitch and coming off harsh. I would do anything for my parents or anything for my relatives. I'm not going to do it for a total stranger or I'm not going to do it for a neighbor. And this is not my field of choice. By no means. I would never, ever, ever be a caregiver. Never. It's just not something I would ever want to do. So... You know, he had an appointment on the following Monday and she was going to text me if she needed me to help her, which I was dreading immensely and I couldn't figure a way how to get out of it. But God worked a miracle and for some reason his appointment got canceled and he didn't have to leave the house. But here's where it gets weird. He has been texting me. He texted me, I believe it was Wednesday early evening. Hi, Lynn, are you home? Question mark. I didn't answer him. Half an hour later. Hi, it's me again. And he, you know, gave his name. Um, please text me when you get home. I guess because he thought I wasn't home. Again, I didn't text him. So I texted him the following morning, which was yesterday. 
and I said, I'm sorry, I do shut my phone off at 6. Um, I just make it a point to get off social media and get off everything. Um, generally, nobody needs me for anything, um, unless it's a text message that, you know, is a random one from a friend or something. Um, so I felt very, very uncomfortable, and I didn't ask what he wanted. He didn't offer what he wanted. Um, well, now whose picture am I going to take? Well, you can look at Casey, and I'm sorry this is all boring, um, but I can't turn this around. So, and then, um, after the blinds got pulled in, pulled in, put in, which was by noon, I thought, you know what, I'm going to take the girls out, we're going to go get gas at Costco, it's a beautiful day, just take the long way, let them have some air, um, I kid you not, I was not even home five minutes and I had moved the blinds up probably about six inches so you know they were they were about you know that much up all the way across and I just happened to be in back of the house or in another area of the house let's put it that way and I heard knocking at my door then I proceed to hear knocking on my glass, the windows. Well, there's nobody else. There's nobody that would do that. So I took the girls quietly in the backyard and for some reason, nobody barked. Nobody ran to the door. I kind of motioned them, you know, come with mommy. Let's all go in the back. And then probably 45 minutes to an hour later, another text message. Um, you know, I have something for you. Are you available this afternoon? And I said, no, I'm not, which I wasn't. I had the last session with my bereavement counselor and he was coming over in the afternoon and it's very emotionally draining. And I'm like, no, I can't see anybody and I don't want to see anybody. I said, maybe tomorrow or, you know, whenever I run into you again. So what happens? Not again today, a half an hour ago. I went to Michael's, like I said in the previous video, I came home. Ten minutes later, I get a text from him and I haven't opened the text message. And I'm like, really, dude? I'm about ready to block your ass. But I'm going to see what it says. It's very, very, very odd, very awkward. I feel like a prisoner in my own house that I can't go out in the front because he's literally not across the street, not kitty corner, but the next house over on the other side. So if he sees me outside... I don't want to talk with him. So I'm keeping the car in the garage, which I do in general. Um, but this is creeping me out. It's really creeping me out. And I don't know if it's a religion thing. I don't know if it's just being a nice thing. But it's a very, very uncomfortable feeling. So... That's what I'm dealing with right now. So I'm sorry this video went 20 minutes. And I'm sorry I wasn't on camera. And I'm sorry you had to just look at Casey. There's Mika over there if you want to see something different. She's kicking it. But um, just want to show you my new blinds and tell you a quick story. So that's what's going on here. So I'm going to let you guys go and I'm going to open the, the text message and see what it says and um, hope it's not weird because if it's weird I'm going to be really creeped out. So I will talk to everybody later. Bye.